Okay, boys and girls, today we're going to take a bit of a uh, contrary path here to our normal type of content, and we're going to talk about this Mortal Kombat 1 uh, soundboard. So this is the soundboard out of the uh, machine at the arcade, and I walked by while somebody was playing it, and I heard all of the normal um, music, but the sound effects were scratchy and... Uh, kind of unintelligible. Now, when I say that, the sound effects were all correct. When you punch, you'd go, hey you know, you'd hear all the correct sound effects, but it would be like uh, scratchy and very low compared to the music. The music was fine, but the sound effects were scratchy and low and just sounded horrible. So as soon as they were done playing the machine, I turned it off and opened it up and I took the soundboard out and I immediately found what is the issue most likely, uh, but let's go back actually a bit. The heat sink was super hot. Like, you touch it and go, Sh oh! You know, the, the heat sink and the amp should never be more than lukewarm. If you have uh, a soundboard where the, the heat sink is cold, then you have a dead amplifier. If you have one that is scalding hot, then the amplifier is being way overdriven, and it's the, you're shortening the lifespan of this uh, exponentially every second that it's running. So I opened it up and I touched the heat sink, and oh, it was super scalding hot. So I shut the machine off. I took out the soundboard, and um, we we know that we have functional logic because we have the correct audio, the correct sounds, and the correct uh, music, but the sound effects are are scratchy and low volume. But the music was correct volume. So we know the amplifier was running in our two op amps. There's two op amps on here, the TL084CN in this location here, uh, U33 and U32. There's two separate op amps on here. So if you have low volume, you can have, you can have a problem with either one of the op amps or both or the main amplifier. Uh, like I say, if it's ice cold and your main amplifier is dead, if it's lukewarm, it should never, never be hotter than lukewarm. If it's hotter than lukewarm, something else is overdriving it. Uh, which is usually the capacitors, and I'll get to that in a moment. But if you have uh, no audio at all, and this is lukewarm, then it's most likely one of the two op amps here. Uh, but anyway, that's a separate issue to what we have here. Um, I think the caps were the problem on this, because if we look at the caps here, there is obvious signs of leakage. Uh, all Around all these caps, it is a bit wet, uh, Let's see here. You can see how there is uh, gunk, gunk on here. It's kind of eating away the traces a bit. There's, see all this stuff here. This black goop that I'm scraping off. Uh, this whole area around here is all wet. See how, see the normal dust. Let's see here if I can get an example of some dust here. Uh, it's it's not too dirty, but you know normal dust is 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 brown light brown you can get your your uh, a bristle brush and just brush it away but if you look around these caps this this dirt is like dark brown and it's dark brown because it's it's laying on leaking electrolyte uh, it's it's a discoloration from normal dirt and gunk because it's it's sitting on a leaking electrolyte and it's kind of hard to see but you can see how this trace has these black pits in it these black pitted traces are caused by leaky electrolyte. And if you look at the solder joints here, they're dull and, and dark as opposed to, let's say, you know, see how, see this solder joint or this via here is nice and shiny. All these are nice and shiny joints. If we look over here, it's uh, dim and gray and dull. So this cap is leaking, this cap is leaking, this cap is leaking. And I'm sure the rest of them are leaking as well. If we look down here at this one, uh, you can see the same type of thing here, all this dirt around here. Um, yeah, so we've got some suspect trace damage here. So I think our issue is leaky caps. So let's just start by removing our heat sink. And that can be done with uh, a screwdriver here. Sometimes. Okay, there we go. And just screw fall out. So there's our nut and our screw. 
then you can squeeze this slightly or push the little lock pin over and it should lift right off in theory there you go now with this particular amplifier you want to be careful because some of these legs will break when you move these around you want to be careful because some of these legs can actually snap or break um, and this, these all actually look intact but right along the edge here right along this edge if you wiggle this back and forth or you aren't too careful when you pull your heat sink out wiggling all that stuff you can break some of the legs on this then you'll have to either scrape them away scrape away the the coating and solder them back together or replace the amplifier so you want to be careful when you're dealing with this um, but yeah that's how you take that off of there just be careful you don't you don't want to work it up and down and around when you're trying to get this off of here or you can break some of the legs there on that amplifier that's another thing to check if you have a if you have a, a ice cold heat sink the amplifier may be okay but it could be broken legs from somebody moving it around in the past so whenever you reinstall this thing you want to make sure that it's sitting as flat against the board as possible if you install this thing where it's sitting up a bit higher than it should that will allow wiggle room this will wiggle back and forth and that's how those legs break on the amplifier but anyway let's get this off of here um, there we go oh great it broke both ha! this is so old it's, you know 30 years but both of these pieces just busted off of get off there it just broke off of this so now <laughs> this this won't stay in here anymore that's fantastic this just oh well we'll figure out something to do with that and set that aside for now oh my lord i think i found the one that's the culprit here look at look at this look at this all of this all of this is a leaky leaky electrolyte look at that look at these traces here they're they've just been eaten away by this electrolyte all all of this dark area around here is all leaky electrolyte from this cap all of that this one's leaking this one's leaking all of these caps are done for look at that all all this one is the main culprit here look at look how wet this is around here that is a prime example of leaky cap here so my theory is correct we're gonna have to uh <laughs> holy cow it's bad that's that's the worst one it might just be this one alone this might be the only one that's causing it but we're going to change them all out including the axial caps uh, i have a cap kit here uh mortal kombat one pcb cap kit so we're going to change all the caps every single stinking one of them. filter cap all of them uh, but i think that's our main problem right there so that's the that's an example there of what to look for so I'm going to pull a bunch of these out. Let's start with the worst one here. Um, that is this guy. Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, there's no signs of leakage on the cap itself. Well, now I won't say no signs, but it's not wet. But it's possible that all of it has already leaked out. Um, let's look at the other side of the board here. Let's zoom out a bit. Let's look at the other side of the board here. Well, yeah. Um, let's get this cleaned up. Well, the uh, board, the board itself isn't really damaged. It's actually in pretty decent shape. I think uh, we discovered this. I think we successfully discovered this before it actually did any damage to the board. So that's good news. 
So that seems okay. Um, let's snag out the other ones here. Let's snag out these other ones. Now, if you ever try and attempt this yourself, the these PCBs are rather thick. So you have to be careful that you don't damage these. The, the traces and the vias, or, I'm sorry, the vias, I should say, are extremely small and sensitive and easy to be damaged. Uh, the traces are very thin and the vias are very thin, so there's not much connecting the via to the trace, so you want to be careful that you don't damage it. And to do that, I run my iron at 800 degrees Fahrenheit because you want to heat, up, heat it up and get the component out as quick as possible. You don't want to induce too much heat for too long or you will damage those uh, vias and they won't have connection to anything anymore. It's a little tidbit for you there as well. Um, yeah, that this cap isn't really leaking either. Uh, but if we get, look in here, well, it's leaking, but what I mean is there's no signs, there's no, uh, it's not wet. Uh, let me focus there. There we go. Yeah, um, it's definitely leaked. That's what all this discolored area around here is. So let's get that cleaned up. Uh, let's go ahead, let's just take all of them out and get them cleaned up here. Another one with, with no, uh, it's not wet. So these don't have any signs of being wet. However, it's possible they just leaked everything out already. So this one here is not too bad. So I'm gonna get all of, I'm gonna remove every single one of the electrolytic caps. Uh, these three, this one, this one, and this one. I'm gonna pull all the radials out as well. Then we'll do some more inspection and get new caps installed and we'll test it out. So stand by, I'll get all these caps out and then we'll come back and take a look. Okay, real quick though, I, I started taking the rest of these out. I got the filter cap out and I took these three 50 volt 100s, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 16 volt 220. These are all 16 volt 220 and if you look here, look how wet this is. See that? Look at that. All this, this wetness here. This is all leaking electrolyte. All of this. All this. This is not alcohol that I use to clean all this. This it's all, all the alcohol is evaporated. This is all leaking electrolyte out of the caps directly on the board. And we were successful in saving this before it ate away anything. So that is, look, look at that. That is all leaky electrolyte from these caps. Wow. these three right here and you can see on the cap itself well maybe you can't yeah around the ring here it's just leaked to the center see the middle there yeah so all of these are part of our main culprit as well let's clean this up Okay, much better. Nice. I think we can rescue this uh, this poor board here. <laughs> Don't worry, little board. We'll we'll get you fixed up. So, fortunately, we didn't have any damage so far. I'm gonna get the rest of these out, and then we'll keep going here. But I wanted to point that out as I was going. Obviously, I took those off, and uh, wow, look at that kind of thing. So, all right, I'll keep going here. Well, I made another substantial discovery. C103 here. This guy right here, this uh, 50 volt, uh, 25 volt 100. It was leaking as well. And it leaked, and I think we have an actual damage trace here. If you can look and see, this trace here, and underneath this cap has just been eaten away. And I'm hoping that it's actually still good. But I'm pretty sure it's been eaten away. Could get lucky here. I don't know. I don't know. 
I'm not, I'm not hopeful about that. Uh, it looks like uh, we may have multiple bad traces here. And that's gotta suck. So I may have spoken too soon about uh, being able to save this. Well, let's do some continuity testing because this via right here, this via right there goes across here and runs over to the Oki chip. So let's just do some continuity testing here. Alright, check our leads. Leads are good. So if we go from... Can I bend that over? Okay, if we go from there to... Huh, it doesn't have anything. Nope, it's completely gone. Wow. Well, that is not good. That has eaten away. This trace is gone completely. Well, okay, let's try... That one is gone. That one... Nope, oh, that goes to there. And that goes to... Hang on a second, let me look here. This goes to here. And then it looks like it goes over to there. Okay. So that goes to here. Okay, so that one's intact. And then we have... It's hard to tell. This one goes over to here. Okay, there we go. This one goes to there. All right. So I think we're okay when it comes to... I think our only issue is this guy right here. I think this is a, just completely eroded away. There's nothing under there. I think that's PCB. Um, that this isn't copper. That's part of the board. <laughs> um, yeah, that goes straight to that via. I'm just surprised I can't pick up anything off of it. Yeah, hmm. But it runs over to it runs over to here. So if we were to go there to Yeah, see it's just all the whole this whole run here is open. All right, well, gonna have to do some patchwork. Um, I'll continue on. Let me get all the caps out, and then we'll we'll do our patchwork here. Then we'll put the new caps in and all that. So I'll get the rest of the caps out, and then we'll see where we get from there. So stand by. All right, so we got <clears throat> all of the caps out, except for two of them, because I want to show you my method of how to do this. It's quite easy, and it helps prevent damage to the board and the traces. So here's what I do. <clears throat> now you want to be careful not to gouge or damage the board, but all you have to do is heat up one leg of the axial cap here until it liquefies. Take your, see that? It just lifts right out of there. It lifted right out. Then you can take the other side, 
heat it up until it liquefies and just well this is a 5 volt line it might take a bit to heat up enough so you go come in from the side here once it heats up enough you can just pull it right out it just comes right out and did you were you even able to see that probably not let's do it again gosh darn it um, okay so again you heat up one side till it liquefies and then you just bloop it comes right out it's that easy heat up the other side and then bloop comes right out that's the easiest way to avoid damaging these vias and the traces and all that stuff because it just like I say this board is so thick people try and use desoldering braid and all kinds of stuff on the back side and they damage the trace because they damage the connection between the trace and the via so it's easy to just pop them out from the top side and then use your wick afterward or your desoldering station whatever you want to use so that's how I took so now all the caps have been removed they're all out and I have discovered here that we have a definite open because this via right here should ring to pin five well, I don't know if it's five, but we go one, two, three, four, five. You follow this through, it goes over this way across here, right to there. But as you see, if we go to the via and we go to one, two, three, four, five, nothing. If I go here, you can hear my meter is good. So if I touch here, continuity, continuity, and then nothing. Lost it. It's gone. This is just this is just brown, unmasked PCB you're seeing under here. So and then it's gone. So I'll have to run a jumper there, but everything else should be okay. This goes to here, uh, this goes to here, this goes to here, this goes to somewhere over here. Uh, yeah, so, and then this goes to here, this goes to here. All right, so, yeah, um, just run that one jumper, and fortunately everything else seems to have survived. So now I need to go through and open up all these holes, get all the caps installed, and then uh, we will... I took out the capacitor and the resistor here to make it easier to test and uh, run our jump, jumper wire. So we'll get that done along with cleaning the holes out. So I'll get the holes cleaned out, put all the new caps in, then we'll come back and take care of this mess on camera and try and get this fixed up. So when, you, when I come back here, you'll see all this stuff reinstalled except for right here. Then we'll focus on this and see what we get. Well, I planned on having this all done except for this, but I found uh, one more problem, and I also wanted to show a little bit of how I got all these holes removed uh, or opened up. All the holes are now opened up except for this one down here, these these two for this cap. So I want to show the... I do not recommend using desoldering braid because of how brittle and frail these vias are. Um, you will break and, and damage traces that feed these holes and vias very easily. Uh, so I recommend using a hot air station absolutely over this thing on the, the wick actually on these soundboards because it's so easy to damage them by using pressure to try and suck the solder up. You damage the via and it lifts right off the trace. So use a hot air station like I'm going to show you in a minute. But um, I noticed this. I was because we had all that electrolyte around these. I went ahead and double checked the traces, and this one runs to here and that checks good. This one runs to here and that checks good. But you can clearly see that this trace here runs from this via all the way through over to this first pin right there. Uh, it runs from here over to right there. It's a straight shot, and that did not ring. Now if we look at the trace, sure enough, it's open. There is a tiny gap between the via and the trace. I scraped away the trace here and it's broken right there. And that was right around that electrolyte was just sitting right here, if you recall. And it ate away that, that trace right there. Fortunately, all these ground planes are still good. Those all check the ground. Like I say, this one here goes to this pin. And this one here goes to this pin. If we turn this around, you can see that. Uh, this pin goes to here and this one goes to there and that checks good because those traces are on the bottom side of the board but this one here we're gonna have to fix that somehow I'm not I'm not gonna put a bodge wire I'm gonna just kind of jumper this with some solder 
And then when I fit the, the new cap in there, I, the solder will fill the hole and I should have continuity there, so we'll find that out. But I also want to show this here, the easiest way to do this. Um, what I do is I'll take the, the uh, well, I got my desoldering station here. You can hear it running in the pump in the fan. Well, actually just the fan right now. But I do not recommend using the braid because you can damage these traces so easily, or the vias. So I simply use the edge. I use the edge of the, the tip here on an angle to try and heat up the pad and then and then straighten it up and suck it out. So if we just kind of do this at an angle here, let's see if I can get a better view here. Kind of at an angle till it melts. And then I'll move it over the center and <laughs> there you go. See how see how easy that is? Opened right up. That's the well, that's what I highly recommend doing on all these because this will limit limit the damage you have on these things. There you go. Wide open. So quick and easy. That makes the job much simpler than trying to use uh, that desoldering braid on all these things. So and then as you can see, maybe you can't. Um, yeah, it's going to be hard to tell, but you can look straight through here and see that we have, uh, there's that one, and there's that one. So quick and easy. Uh, so now let me get all these caps installed, and then we'll come back and fix this part up here. Okay, so all of the caps have been replaced, all the electrolytics, all of the axials, everything is now done. And it all went in just fine. I was able to get a little extra solder on that pad and, cr and fix that uh, trace there. So we'll check that out later. But all of the caps have been replaced and now we can focus on doing this. And that should fix us up. There's a couple more things I want to do, like taking the ROMs and chips out and cleaning the legs and putting them back in and all that stuff. But what we can, we can uh, focus on here now is we need to run a bodge wire from this via over to pin 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be our next challenge here. Um, and this via here got a little bit damaged. Like I mentioned, it's, they're, they're tough to work on. Trying to get this resistor out of here, I damaged this via, uh, this, this trace here. So I'm going to have to uh, patch over to the, the trace here as well. So we'll get that done. But first thing, I have some, I have a uh, old pinball coil here and I use this magnet wire to run these jumpers. So if we zoom in here, you can see that it's basically very easy to do. You want to kind of just scratch off a little bit of the coating here to expose the actual wire. And then we'll flip it over and do the other side. And then flip it a bit. And I use this magnet wire because it's got a coating on it where it won't short out to other stuff. Because uh, this is not a connection that's going to be running this is just a data connection it's not a voltage or a power or an amperage connection it's just a data connection so what we'll do now is we will heat this up and push this through hopefully I need to get something that I can grip this with let's go with my other tweezers there are, uh, well, these are all bent up too, sons of bitches. Uh, let's straighten this all back up again here. Uh, that's not going to work. I'm sorry. I'm off camera here. I'm trying to straighten up the tips of my... Um, tweezers here so I can use them to do what I have to do. Uh, that might work okay. So I'm going to have to try and fit this down through here. Alright. Nope. That's not going to work. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just see if we can... I mentioned before, I don't like using the desoldering braid, but let's see if we can just open this hole up a bit to make it easier on us. I don't think I'll be able to very easily. <laughs> he says, as it opens right up. Okay. 
Well, in this case, uh, yeah, let's just put this down through here, like so. And then we'll add a bit of solder to fill it back up. Oh, come on now. There we go, that'll work. Okay, uh, let's clean this off a bit so you can see what's going on. Oh, it's still hard to see, but there we go. So now we have our wire through our via, and we'll just bend this over through where it used to go, like so. And then just for good measure, we will bend it this way, and then this way. And then over to where it needs to go. So roughly, roughly there. Okay. Now we need to cut it, we'll cut it right there and then we will scrape some of this away scrape away scrape away scrape away it's gonna to be tough to flip it over and do the other side so we'll see if we can make this work without doing that first uh, let's see so it was one two three four five Yes, one, two, three, four, five is the trace that we need. Um, okay, let's. One, two, three, four, five. Come on now. Come on. Got it. Got it. And we don't didn't create any bridges, so one, two, three, four, five. Now if we were to this may I may have not cut this in the right spot. Uh, so I think we may end up just going above it. I would have liked to have gone underneath like before, but oh damn it, I broke it. That's okay, we'll fix it. I need to put some more. As you can see, this is a not an easy process here. Let's toss a little flux on here. That'll help. I just worry about having it break trying to clean up the flux here. All right, one, two, three, four, five.
All right, I think that will do. All right. So now let's kind of fold this around here. Okay. There we go. Let's clean this up and make sure we didn't create any bridges. I think, I think we are good to go. Look at that. Uh, yeah, look at that. No bridges. We're not on our way to Madison County. So, I think, uh, good, yep. So that's done. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth pin over. And it should be good. So now let's get our resistor back in there. All right, so our resistor is back in. see if we can successfully bridge that over. I think we have. Let's find out. This should go over to here. And it, yep. So we've made our bridge. That ends up going over to pin six, which should be this one. So this pin should ring to here and to here. Success. All right. Now all of our other traces were good, so now we should be able to go to our via here and touch pin, let's do it the other way. Touch this to here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Outstanding. All right. Um, I accidentally broke the the filter cap here, trying to get it removed. So I'll have to rob one from uh, another board here. Do I have? I don't think I have a board around me. Let me go down and grab another board, and I'll come right back and we'll install that capacitor on there. Stand by. All right. So we got the cap acquired. Stole it from a donor board. And we'll get that reinstalled right here. Go in there, you bastard. You lousy rotten bum, you. All right. So let's. that through there. Actually, we'll do it from this side. We're going to turn it around the other way because it likes to mess around on me here. <clears throat> Check the other side. Yep, that's good. Okay, now let's get our last cap installed. And this goes, which way does this go? This one goes with the negative up. I sanded through the positive indicator. So let's go this way. All right. There we have it. Okay. 
Okay. Well, I think that's pretty much it. We have our repair done. And of course we need to do our cleanup, which I'll do in a moment, but let's make sure that we don't have anything shorted. Um, okay. So this should go here, and it should not touch this one. It does not. Um, these two are not shorted together. These two aren't shorted together. These two, these two, these two. Okay, so then we still have this to pin. One, two, three, four, five. That is correct. We still have continuity from here to here. And then all the way over to what looks like here. That's good. So we got this trace fixed here. That was the only issue we had with that. We got our resistor and our capacitor reinstalled. Our jumper wire is here. This is reinstalled. All of our axials and, and uh, electrolytics have been replaced. We can test again. Uh, this here is supposed to ring to here, which it wasn't. And... Now it is, so that trace is repaired, and I think we should be good. Uh, I'm going to take all these, well, I'm going to clean all up, all the uh, flux residue off the top and all on the all the bottom here. Uh, but I believe we have a successful repair here, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, fingers crossed. Uh, but let's go ahead and pop all of these chips out so we can just do a light dusting on the legs and make sure that they're all good. And it's very important to not put them in backwards because if you'll notice, the text is, if you're looking at the board, you know, like normal, from top down, everything, uh, the ROMs are in upside down based off the label. So if you see here, the labels are upside down. So it's very important you don't put them in upside down when you're going to put them back in. You want to pay attention to the notch, and the notches are all towards the left side. So you want to make sure <laughs> when you put these back in to not put them back in backwards, or then you'll be... Uh, You'll be hating life at that point. And you want to be careful of your clock crystal here. You don't want to break that uh, clock crystal. Or the new cap you just put in. Alright. Let's just go ahead and pop the rest of these out. Okay, um, set this aside, and you don't want to do, uh, these pins have a coating on them, so you don't want to take the coating off, you just kind of want to do a light brushing here to get rid of any kind of oxidation or tarnish, just light, quick and easy like that, um, and then give it a good inspection, make sure they're all clean. These are all fairly clean to begin with. And this board is an original board. And what I mean by original is that it had, before I took it out of the machine and did all this work to it, it was untouched for 30 years, untouched in the, in the, uh, in the cabinet. So I'm not surprised these caps are all leaking. So let's get all these back in. We got our notch on the left side and we have our notch on the left side. So this should go in like this. This one doesn't have a notch, it's got a little uh, indicator here. This little dot indicates the, the notch, so it goes in like this. And uh, yeah, I don't want to tell you wrong. <laughs> okay, so then we have this one here with the notch on the left. Make sure you don't bend any pins when you're putting these back in. Alright. Otherwise you won't know if, uh, if it doesn't work, you won't know if it's something you did with the solder work, or if it's something that you uh, did with these chips, not putting them back in right. Okay, so here we have U13, which is this one. 
this one here. Okay. U12 is this one. U3 is this one. And then we have our Yamaha chip here. There we go. So, uh, we're all incorrect there, and we're correct here. We are correct on these chips. Everything's incorrectly. Uh, there's no legs sticking out, nothing bent. Everything looks good. So, I think uh, we are ready to go. I'll give it a clean up. I'll clean all the flux residue off. Um, I don't have any in this area here, so let's go ahead and get this reinstalled. Now, I do like, I did mention before, is you have to, I like to get these as, as, as low on the board as possible. See how it's sitting right up flush against the board? But my hole doesn't line up for the amplifier. So the ideal position for this would be right here, flat against the board. But I can't, I have to, I have to move this up to right there. See, it doesn't sit flat against the board. The ideal position would be there to prevent, prevent this. See this? Having it flat against the board would help prevent that. But if it's sitting up like this, it's much easier. You have much more margin for movement, and that's how these things get bent like that. Um, but this, fortunately, has appears to have survived. So we're going to have to live with the way that it is because I don't want to have to desolder all these pins. So we're going to put it back like that, unfortunately. But not a big deal. So let's go ahead and get this back in here and get that through here. Even though it's broken, I'll, I'll fix it later. For the purposes of this video, eh, it's fine. Why don't you want to go through there? What is, oh, I see, you got to turn it. There we go. It was hung up on a capacitor. Okay, um, now let's get our screw through here. If we can, it's going to be tough. Zoom out a bit, sorry. Uh, you kind of got to, let's use an actual screwdriver here. Set this up like this and bring this down onto it. It is going to be the easiest way to get that through there. Gosh dang it. Unless you have a magnetic screwdriver and I don't have one of those, I'm too cheap. So. through there I got it okay now let's get this started on here and before we actually snug it down let's push this heat sink down as far as we can get it like there we go I'll push the heat sink down simultaneously while I screw this on you don't want to over torque this just nice and snug and that's all you need now um, you can see here that we're close to the we're close to bottomed out but not it still kind of rocks a bit because like I say that that uh, amplifier is not as far through the board as it should be but I think this should be fine see I do have movement but just sitting in a cabinet this is gonna be just fine so there we have it uh, let's get it cleaned up and when I come back I will have it in the cabinet over here I don't have any spare boards loose for testing so I have to throw it in my cabinet over here off to the side and we'll fire it up and hopefully it'll work. So here we go. Okay, so here we are inside the multi MK cabinet. This is what I have to use for testing this soundboard. I don't have any loose boards to test with. This is all I have. So here's my MK1T unit board uh, with my original soundboard, which you can see I've already got everything replaced on it and done all the work to that one as well. Uh, the uh, volume pot, the 50k on volume pot, is soldered to the pin, so I can't hook it up to our test one here. So to remedy that, I had to install a little 15k ohm resistor across pins 2 and 4 to simulate uh, these volume pot being about mid-position. So we have everything hooked up, ready to go. You can see this is the one we just, oh, sorry, this is the one that we just worked on. There's our bodge wire and all of our new caps and original ROMs and 
everything so we're all hooked up uh, now the moment of truth has arrived and let's go ahead and fire it up and see what we get now I think it last time I played this it was a UMK3 so we may have to switch to MK1 but no big deal so here we go all right yep that's definitely a uh, I think it's UMK3 yep okay so let's switch to one and here we go hopefully we got our test tone Haha. <laughs> Do we have audio? Let's skip past our ROM check. And I don't have any. The, uh, the track mode sounds are turned off via dip switches, so here we go. It's hard to do this sideways. I'm, I'm standing, standing here sideways trying to do this. Wins. Let's try this side here. Can I slide? Yes. <laughs> Well, how about that? Good to go. Okay, let's turn this off. And we have a successful repair. So, hopefully, uh, if you ever get one of these MK1 or even MK2 soundboards, you can use this information to uh, help help you if you want to uh, try and do some repair work and things like that. So, thanks for watching. And I still got that, yeah. So I'll get this back in the machine at the arcade, and it should be ready to go for many more years to come. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.